What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the Thomas Gallery and today we have here I would say your favorite rappers, favorite rappers, favorite rapper, favorite rapper. This is Rakim Allah, God MC. He is probably, well, I'll play this. <clears throat> He is definitely one of the most influential people in all of hip hop. That that's no debate. I said one of the most influential. However, I don't think there's any debate whatsoever that he is, in my opinion, I would say my opinion, he is the most influential MC ever. Those who don't know who he is, he's a you no. Know, he came out in '86. He even said, it. "I made my debut in '86 with a melody in the President's Mix." Y'all know, y'all already know. And what makes him so influential is mainly, you know, his, his style, his his flow, his his patterns. And his, I'll start. I'll start with the patterns first. He did something in rap that had not really been done before. What he did was he, he added a new element into rap. This means it's not new in terms of literature, but it was new in terms of rap. He did what is started was called internal rhyming. And what internal rhyming is in poetry, in creative writing. You have you no know, a set of lines which are called bars. Okay? And in those bars you have words known as lyrics. Okay. And what used to be the norm in terms of rap or lyricism is the rapper would rhyme the last word of the bar. So if you have like hickory dickory dock. The mouse ran up the clock. Now, the 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 only words that rhyme were the rhyme were the words at the very right end. Doc and clock. Actually, hickory and hickory degree doc. Mouse ran up the clock. What he did was, and he and he actually explained this very well. He said that what he would do is, he would take a page like a piece piece of paper. And put sixteen. Excuse me. Put sixteen lines, or known as bars. Like he'll take like some lines in there. And what he would do is he would try to see if how many words, how many words he could fit in each line of the page of the, of the paper. We say how many words, how many how many multisyllabic words he could fit in there, and he would try to put as many words as possible that rhyme together. So it was, you know, it would, it would sound like there's like one continuous chain of words that, and they all seem to rhyme. During that time, that was new. No one, no one was doing that. No one in, in hip hop or rap was doing that. No, because everybody used to do, you know. The whole, you know, rapper's delight, you know, and what you hear is not a test on um, rapping to the beat. Me and me, the crew, and we're friends, we're going to try to move your feet. Everybody did that, that called, was called the end rhyme, as I explained. He decided to say, okay, I'm going to take as many words as possible and jam them into one line, and I want to rhyme as many words in that one line as possible. Which created what's called internal rhyming, which means the rhyme, the words, not only rhyme at the end of the line, but they also rhyme in the middle, and in the beginning, they rhyme inside the line. They don't rhyme at the end; they rhyme at inside. And with him doing that, he created a pattern. He created a flow. With a flow spoon was like, like how your voice sounds as you're saying the words, uh, the pace of your voice. 
the flow. It changed the flow patterns. And it's, it's sped up. It sped up the flow. Because the, the faster you talk, the more words you're able to add into your rhyme. The more words you're able to say if you can fit them all in there. So when he changed when he changed the rhyme scheme, he simultaneously changed the flow. So now you can rap faster because you now know that you can add more words into your lines. Before then, nobody was doing that. Nobody was doing that. And because of that particular style, he was able to come up with very complex rhymes. He was ready to come up with very complex songs that you had to rewind so you can really understand what he was saying because what he was saying and how fast he was saying it went hand in hand. So he so it was really the first time you had that rewind factor. When people actually had to rewind what you said. And this particular style flourished. It flourished big time. You know, just like just like he said, like his, like his debut was no in eighty six. He even said, "I made my debut in eighty six. So that lets you know the time frame in which she was doing this, in which this was happening. And he came up with songs, you know, "Sweat the Technique." Where you really hear this pattern, you know, if you like, if you can just count, if you could take one of his lines, just take one line of, of his verse, and just count how many words rhyme in one one simple line. How many words actually rhyme? It's astonishing, especially for that particular time. I mean, now people do it all the time, but during the time he introduced that particular style to rap. No one was doing that. Like, if you can count how many words he put together, and it all makes sense. That's that's another thing. He wasn't just putting words together that sounded the same just for the sake of doing it. When he did it, it actually had a message to it. It actually, you know, it was it was some continuity to it. Where even though it sounded like he was saying one particular sound. The words he was saying still made sense, which is another thing. Another thing that you know that he did, you know, he, he he put a story to it that made you want to listen to what he said, not only because of the words he used, but the story behind it. So, you know that that right there, but that was he was the one that gave you the style of. You know, a Biggie, a, a Nas, a Jay Z, you no know, Kumo D, Kumo D, Big Daddy Kane, and Rock Kim were three of the big, the other greatest influences of rap. Simply based off of their, their their style of rapping, just off of that alone. Excuse me. And to this day. We have never gone back. Rap has never gone back to the simple in rhyming style. I mean, there, there's there's a few there's a few lines we can hear that in you know, that in rhyme pattern, but as in terms of like it being like a popular style, we have never gone back to that since. Once this particular style was introduced, the internal rhyming and the multisyllabic rhyming, once that was introduced. We never went back. Hip hop, rap has never gone back to the simple rapper's delight nursery rhyme style. Cause that's where you hit it. The end rhyme style really, really is prevalent in the nursery rhymes. Kick it ridiculously, Doc. Got my sweat up the clock. You know, all around the mulberry bush, the monkey chips, the wheezy, the monkey saw was all in front. Pop goes like that's that's end rhyme. And that was 
you know, during the 70s and 80s of rap, that was a big, you know, a, a big part of rap. Like, that's how the, the MCs were rap back then. Like I said, the Rapper's Delight and all that stuff. If you, if, you listen, if you listen to Rapper's Delight, it's nothing but end rhymes. All the words at the end rhyme. There's, there's no internal rhyme. There's no multi-syllabic rhyme. It's very simple, which makes it which makes it easier to repeat because it's very simple. But Rakim especially was the man when it came to that particular style. And it wasn't that it wasn't that he was, it wasn't that he invented that particular style, because I mean, there are plenty of poets before him that wrote like that. However, when it came to rap, it's the thing is, when it came to rap, what makes what made him such a heavy influence with that particular style is one, the words he used. Because the words he used weren't just small words. He used large, he had a large vocabulary. Well, he has still. His large vocabulary, he used as many words as he possibly can in the shortest amount of time. That's what is amazing about it is that how how many words how many words can you put into a rhyme in 30 seconds like that how many large multisyllabic words can you use in 30 seconds or less and when you do that you will see okay like in order for you to do this you got to say it fast and I only got to say it fast, the sound of his voice. Most rap was, you know, most most rap is is you know is, is loud. But the tone of his voice, the tone of his voice was also something different because his voice wasn't very loud. He spoke very, very, you know, I won't say soft, but the tone of his voice was low. No, it was low. It was mellow. It was very, you know, soothing. Which means, for, like, for him to say all those words in that line, and for him to say it in a low tone, means you had to, you had to repeat, you had to rewind it for different reasons. He was saying aggressive lyrics, but in a mellow tone. That's something different. Like, because usually when you say an aggressive lyric, you usually want to give the impression sonically that it's an aggressive lyric. Like, you want somebody to feel the aggression in your voice when you say an aggressive lyric. Or well, Rakim, he said an aggressive lyric with a mellow tone. That was un that's unusual. That's very unusual. It's unusual now. You know, there's there's not many there's not many times you're gonna hear an aggressive lyric said in a, in a in a mellow tone. Chances are if you hear an aggressive lyric, you're gonna hear an aggressive tone. Like if someone says, you know, I'll you know, I'll come up in your house, you know, and wet your whole crew up or something like that. You you're gonna to want to give the impression, you want to give the impression that what is being said is aggressive. So the person can not only hear what you're saying, but they can feel what you're saying. They can give they can give the impression that oh wow he really means this. Like he really will come up in your house and do X Y and Z. But when you hear somebody say something similar in aggression, 
but the tone is different. Your brain is now has to process the information differently. Your brain has to say, okay, now wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. He's saying something that is aggressive. But the way he's saying it doesn't match. The tone of his voice don't match it. I now have to listen to him differently. I can't just I can't just take you no know, I, I can't just take an aggressive mentality to Rakim's music. I now have to think about the words he uses. I can't rely on the sound of his voice. I have to now listen to the words he used. Now I have to contemplate why is he using these particular words and why is he saying it like this. So he he makes your brain actually process the information different. You can't process it the same way anymore. And it, 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 it train it, what it does it, it it trains your ear to interpret and interpret a message differently. It trains your ear different now. You now have to say, okay, even though what he's saying is aggressive, his tone isn't aggressive, which means I can't approach him the same way I approach another rapper. Which will also make you say, okay. How many other rappers rap like this? Also, let's not forget the music he used because many people don't know that Rakim plays the saxophone. And the saxophone is a very, very jazz heavy instrument. It's played a lot in jazz. And he grew up listening to jazz, so it's no wonder. So there's no there's no coincidence that you hear a lot of his music, like Sweat the Technique. That's jazz that you're listening to. When you hear when the beat you hear when he's rapping, it's jazz. And then you hear him you hear him rapping as though he too is a jazz instrument. Which I think is amazing, which means though he's like you, it's, it's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And when you hear his music, you can say, okay, I know who influenced him. Well, I, I know, I'm oh, sorry, I know the rappers that he influenced. I know. I could hear I could hear it in their lyrics. Like I know when I hear Rock Kim, I also hear Black Thought. I know when I hear Rock Kim, I also hear I also hear Nas. I also hear Tyler Kwali. I also hear Most Deaf. Like I hear those influences just based off of the, the rhyme pattern. Just off the rhyme pattern alone. I hear you no, know, I hear Pharaoh Marsh. I hear Jay-Z in the flow. But I hear Jay-Z's flow of, of the tone of his voice. I hear Rakim. No, you hear these things when you listen. When you listen closely to the tone of his voice and the words he uses. You say, "Okay, that sound that, that reminds me of this. That reminds me of this person. That reminds me of this person." Which is a good thing because it means, okay, this person, Rakim, influence is so great, and it goes through generations. Like I hear Kendrick Lamar. When I hear Rakim, I could tell the influences of these some of these MCs. You you could tell, you know the the multi syllabic. I don't know. I hear 
I hear and I hear logic. I hear little Dicky when I hear Rakim. If you listen, if you listen to Rakim's music, his old music, it's okay. Yeah. You can even pick up the, you can even you know identify the song that influenced them greatly. Like when I hear when I hear Nas or I hear Jay Z rap, I hear mahogany. Rock Kim's song Mahogany. Like that's that's the one, that's the song I hear. And he's brilliant in that way. Like I say, he's your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, favorite rapper. That's how impactful his influence is. Whoever your favorite rapper is, if you go to their favorite rapper and ask them their favorite rapper, it'll go back to rock him. So he's called the God MC for a reason. There's a reason why he's referred to the God MC. Rakim is, Rakim is the, he's the dude. He's the man. I said, my, fa- my favorite songs are Sweat the Technique. Um, I remember the first Rakim song I heard was a microphone thing. Because I remember when I heard it, there was a part where, um, it was two parts. <clears throat> there was a part where he said, um, cool, because I don't get upset. I kick a hole in the speaker, pull the plug, and I jet. Like that part, I remember because I laughed because I remember seeing the video when I was little where you see this little kid when he, he does that he acts like he'll kick a hole in the speaker for the plug then I jet. Like I laughed when I when I heard that because like that sounded like something a kid would do. They said because I rocked the mic and try to say yes y'all they try to take it and say that I'm too small. Cool. Because I don't get upset. I kick a hole in the speaker for the plug then I jet. Like when he said that, I was like, oh my god, that sound like that's like something I do. Like he wants to rhyme, he's a microphone thing, he wants to rhyme, but the, the big kids, the big boys are taking the microphone from him saying that he can't rhyme, he's too small. He's like, alright, fine, I know. I'll be alright. So what I'm gonna do is I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a kick a hole in the speaker, because if you kick a hole in the speaker, it distorts the sound coming out. He said they're gonna put a plug on the microphone and you're gonna run. When he said that, I was like, oh, man, that's like something I would do. Like, that sounds like something I would do. Kick a hole in the speaker, pull the plug in the jack. Because I'm going to kick the hole in the speaker, pull the plug in my run real fast. So they won't catch me and beat me up. Also, I heard the line of, um, when he said, E-F-F-E-C-T, smooth operator, operating correctly. And what caught my attention about that line is, he said it so well. I wanted to. I wanted to see if he actually, if he actually, you no, know, said it correctly. Like if he actually used it. Like if he spelled the word properly. So when he said, you know, effect. I was like, did he, did he spell that right? Because he said it so smooth when he, when he, when he was rapping. He said it so smooth. I was like, did he say it right? Did he say it correct? Then when he said operating, smooth operator operating correctly. I was like, wow, he just said he just said a double like he just used the word twice. But the way he used it was different. He said operating correctly. I was like, this dude, like and I was I was a little I was a child when I heard this. That's why I laughed when he said kick a hole in the speaker, put a plug in the jet. I was a child when I heard him say that. I was like, yeah, this ain't something I would do.
happens after 12. I'm worse than the gremlin. Feed me hip hop and I start trembling. And if those don't know, Gremlin was a movie where these little little creatures that if you pour water on them, they will start to multiply. And it was things is after twelve, I think with the took the movie and Gremlin, the Gremlins didn't like sunlight. So it said after twelve, I'm worse than the Gremlin. Feed me hip hop and I start trembling. Because every time every time you fed the Gremlins water, they start to shake and, and tremble and stuff like that. Now they start to like, you know, lose their minds and stuff, they try to spaz out. To so after twelve, I'm worse than the Gremlin. Feed me hip hop and I start trembling. You talking about him, him being a fiend, like, you know, a junkie. For those who don't know, you know, like, well, a fiend is someone who's addicted to something. And he's coming with he's a, he calls himself a microphone fiend. He was a fiend for hip hop. And when you, when you fed him hip hop, he was at peace. But when you don't feed him hip hop, he starts trembling like a junkie. He starts trembling like, you know, a, a drug, a drug addict. He needs hip hop as his fix. He needs the microphone so he can say his lyrics. So he was a microphone fiend. So he used a drug reference to describe how much he loves hip hop. He's a junkie for hip hop. He's a junkie for the microphone. He's a junkie for rap. So he took something that's negative, like a drug addict, and made it popular and positive. Microphone fiend. Everybody says that. Everybody says microphone fiend. Because no one has said microphone fiend before that. No one ever actually used that that description like that. He was the first one to do that. He was the first one to say, I, I am, I'm a junkie, but not a junkie in terms of something bad. I'm a junkie in terms of something good. I'm a microphone fiend because hip-hop is my drug. Not, not crack, which was you no know, horrible in the 80s, the crack epidemic. Especially in New York and in places like DC, where I was grew up, I grew up, I was born during that time. I was born in the early '80s of the crack epidemic in the DC. So it's crazy during that time. He was one of the first ones to bring knowledge itself from the 5% nation of gods of earth into hip hop where his actual lyrics, he was, he was talking about, he was talking about the lessons, what they call the 120 lessons into his raps. A lot of people weren't doing that. A lot of folks weren't, weren't, weren't bringing that. But during the eighties and the early nineties, it was a it was a big, big, big spread of knowledge itself into rap lyrics. No way, no rock him a lot and all that. And we start hearing we start putting his actual lessons of knowledge itself into his lyrics, which means he actually will teach you. While he was entertaining you. And back then they used to call it uh, edutainment. Edutainment was education entertainment where the rapper would teach while rapping. And he was very good at that. He was very good at teaching you while he was rapping to you. So while you're saying the lyrics, you're not knowing that he's actually using education. He's actually infusing education into his lyrics. So was he was he a big influence in, in rap and hip hop? Yes, if not the most influential. He, he to me he's definitely the most influential rapper. He's definitely the most influential rapper. 
I would say. We write the name on it. Um, Rakim Allah. The R. See a part of me that you never see. When the fiend for the microphone, I'm a microphone fiend at 12. I'm worse than the gremlin. Feed me hip hop so I start trembling. Yeah, good stuff. But thank you all for watching this video. Leave a comment down below. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. I will catch you all later. Peace.